Hey guys, it's Kayler. Welcome to the YouTube channel. In today's video, this is going to be part two of our dark themed responsive portfolio website. So we're going to go ahead and code this today. So make sure you guys download the project file. The link will be down in the description. And let's go ahead and jump into our text editor and get started. All right, so in the project file, I have the index.html, the main.css, and all the images you're going to need for this website. So let's go ahead and start with the HTML. And so I'm going to start with my doc type, HTML, and then open and close my HTML tag. Next is the head tag, so we'll open that up. And first, I'm going to do the title, and I'm going to call this portfolio. Then we're going to need two meta tags. The first one is going to be for the character set, and I'm going to do UTF-8. And the second one is for the viewport. So name, viewport, and then content. And this is going to be width equals device dash width comma initial dash scale equals 1.0. And then finally, let's link to our style sheet. So link rel style sheet. And then I'll do type text slash CSS, href, and then main.css. Outside of our head tag, we can open and close the body. First thing in the body, I'm going to create a div with a class of wrapper. It's going to allow us to have spacing on the sides for our design. So that's going to give us the space here with that wrapper. So the first thing I'm going to do is the nav. So I'm going to give this a class of clear fix. This is because we're going to be floating some elements, so we're going to need to clear that. Inside of here, we're going to need two A tags. And on the href, I'm just going to use a pound symbol for now. The first one is going to be an S tag. And this is going to strike through our name. You don't have to add this if you don't want to. Just type in your name here. And that'll give us that little strike through. And the second A tag, we're going to have an image tag with a source of images dribble underscore icon dot png and then i'll just give this an alt of dribble icon that's all we need for the nav so outside of the nav i'm going to create the header so let's make some space here and we'll say header and inside of here we're going to have an h1 tag and then a p tag inside of the h1 tag i'm going to say ui design plus prototyping. Inside of the P tag, I'm going to paste in my text. For email, we're going to put an A tag around this. And I'll give the href a pound symbol. And that's so we can make that red for our button. That's all we need for the header, so let's go ahead and get our preview open. So you'll see what we have here. Let's collapse this in a little bit. All right, outside of the header, the next thing I'm gonna do is a div with a class of work. And this is where we're gonna be displaying most of our images. I think we have six images here. So inside of here, I'm gonna have an A tag. href is gonna have a pound symbol. And then we'll have an image tag. And I'll go ahead and give that an alt and a source. So let's close this source tag and then we'll duplicate that six times. The first one is going to be images 01. The second one is going to be images 02 and so on. For the alt tag, I'll just say project image. You can name that whatever you like. So now you'll see we have all of our images in our website. And that's all we need for the work section. The next section is going to be another div with a class of what I do. First thing we need is an H1 tag. And this one's going to say everything. And I'm going to add a BR tag. And you need. Let's remove the spaces here. 
The next thing we're gonna need is an H2, and this is gonna be for that background text that says I am. And so I'll type that out, and we'll use an H2 and size this up since we're already using the H1. Let's also give this a class so we can target it of I am with a capital A. We're using camel case, so the first word is lowercase, and then every word after that has a capital letter at the beginning. Okay, so next we're gonna do an unordered list. And inside of here, we're gonna list out everything we do. So I'm gonna say LI, and then we'll have, I believe it's seven of these. So two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'll paste in everything we do here. So that's it for the what I do class. So let's make a new div. And we're gonna give this one a class of work two. And this is gonna be for the larger displayed projects. So in here, we're gonna need an A tag href pound symbol then we'll have an image and then a source of images this is going to be large 01 and then the alt tag I'll just put project image again and duplicate that and then change that to the second large image so now we have both of our larger images as you'll see over here and finally we need one more thing which is the footer so I'll open a footer tag and inside of here, we'll have a P tag, and I'll paste in our copyright information. Just like that, we are done with the complete HTML for this website. So if we take a look at what we have so far, here's our nav, our header, our work section with one, two, three, four, five, six images. That looks good. Everything you need, the IAM that goes behind this, everything we do here, two large projects, and then our footer. So now all we have to do is style this and then we can make it responsive. So let's go into the CSS now. So if you followed one of my tutorials before, you'll notice that I like to section out my CSS just to keep it nice and organized because I always use one CSS file unless I'm doing a huge, huge website. Uh, so the project file will have everything separated for you. So the first thing we're going to do is the global and that's going to be applied to the majority of the website setting like margins and things. So let's do a browser reset first. And inside of here, we're going to set the margin to zero, the padding to zero, the border to zero, the outline to zero, the font size to 100%, and then vertically aligned to baseline. Next up in here, we're going to target the HTML and we're going to set the font family. I always like to mention this, since I am on localhost, this is going to work. But if you're going to put this on a server, you're going to need something like uh, type kit or you're gonna need to embed the font. So I'm just gonna type mine out Proxima Nova and Then I'm also going to have a backup if that's not available, which is gonna be sans serif Then for our body tag, we're just gonna need to set a few things first is the width to 100% and then the background stuff so let's go background dash image and URL images and I think I named this BG, yeah, BG01. Next, we can set the position, so background position, and I'm gonna set that to the top, space, center, so that'll be top and centered. Then the background repeat, and we're gonna set that to no repeat, and then we'll need to cover this, so background size is set to cover. Let's see if we can see that over here. We can just barely see it. So that's all we need for that. Now we can target our wrapper to set up our margins on the side. So wrapper, and I'm gonna set this to a width of 90% with a margin of zero on the top and bottom and auto on the left and right. That will center that into our page. Then we need to make our clear fix class that we used on our navigation right here. So for this, we're going to say clear fix, and then we're gonna apply a selector of after. And in here, I'm gonna say content, and then I'm just gonna need to do two parentheses, and then a semicolon, and then we'll clear both of our floats, and then we need to display this as a table. And that will make sure that our nav doesn't have zero height and it displays correctly. Now we can do our fonts, and then that's pretty much it for the rest of this. So first is our H1, 
And we're gonna set the color on that to white. Font size, I'm gonna go with, let's try 48 pixels. That looks pretty good. It's nice and big. And then for our body text, which is our P, we'll display that as white as well. So color white. And then we'll font size to 16 pixels. Since we're using an unordered list, we can target that as well. So UL. And then I'll set the list style to none to remove our bullets. And then we also need to set a margin on the top of this to 30 pixels for some spacing in between this heading and that text. Then we can target the list item font and we can set that to white. Font size will match the P text of 16 pixels. And then we'll add a margin on the bottom of 20 pixels. And that'll give us some pretty decent spacing. You can also use line height, but we'll just go with this for now. And I believe that is it for our global styles. So the first thing we need now is the navigation. So the first thing I'm gonna target is the nav. I'm gonna set the height on this to 100 pixels, the line height to 100 pixels, and then I'll make sure everything's gonna start centered. And then we can target the nav A, and I wanna set that to white, and then remove the text decoration, so that underline and get that out of there. Set that to none. For the nav A image, We'll set this to vertically align middle, so that is centered with our text. And then the last thing we need to do is float our image to the right. So we'll just say nav A, and then I'll use the nth child, and I'll set that to two, so that selects our image. And then we can float this to the right so that we have that nice and aligned. And that's all we need for our nav. For our header, I'm gonna set this to a margin of 100 pixels on the top, zero on the right, 200 pixels on the bottom, and zero on the left. Then we can text align this to the center by default, and then later we'll align this to the left for our mobile. Now we need to select the header P tag. Set a width on this to 45%. And then a margin of 30 pixels on the top. Auto on the right, zero on the bottom, and auto on the left. So since we're styling the desktop version, I'm gonna go ahead and scale this out so we can see what we have right there. And if we take a look at our design, it's looking pretty close so far. Last thing we need for the header section is to target that A tag that is inside of our P for our link, and we're gonna make that a red color, so I'm gonna set the color to F, F, four, A, five, E. And then I'm also gonna remove that underlines a text decoration of none. And now this should look exactly like our design, which it does. That looks pretty good. Onto our work section. For this, we're only gonna need two things. So I'm gonna say dot work for the entire class, and I'm gonna text align this to the center, and that will center up our images real nice and easy for us. And then we can also set the width on this to 100%. Then we can select our images, so work a image. I'm gonna give these a margin of 1% all around so we can have some nice spacing on those. And then the width of these is going to be 45%. That looks good. You'll see the margin is highlighted here. So that's our space when we added. For the what I do section now, I'm going to target that class. So what I do. We'll text align this one to center as well. I'm going to give this 100 pixels on the top, zero on the right. 200 pixels on the bottom and zero on the left. I believe that is the exact same thing we did with the header. Yeah, it is. Okay, so that's what we're doing there, matching that spacing. And then we also need to set this to position relative because we're gonna have to position absolute this IM text right there. Next, we'll target the H1, so what I do 
H1. And we'll just set the color on this to blue. And the color code on that one is 13A3FD. And then lastly, the class that we created for the I am text, which is right here, is called I am. So we'll say dot I am. And then we'll set first the color of this to 25272C. The font size is going to be 150 pixels. Position this absolute. On the left, I'm going to say 50%. And then to get this perfectly center, I'm going to use transform, translate X to negative 50%. And then we can also do the WebKit version. So dash WebKit dash transform and then translate X negative 50%. Now we need to set the top value, so top of negative 20 pixels, and then Z index at negative one to put it behind that H1 text we have. So now you'll see it's nicely aligned and right behind that text. Now we're on to the work to section, which is our larger images. Here we only need two things as well, so we'll say dot work to. I'll set the width to 100%. And then the text align needs to be centered to make sure those images are centered as well. And then we can target the images, so dot work to a image. Margin at 1%. And I'm gonna set the width on these to 92%. So now we just need the footer and then the desktop version will be completed, so footer. And we'll just set this to text align centered to make sure that's perfect. And then we're going to need some spacing, some margin, 60 pixels on the top and the bottom, and zero on the left and the right. Then we'll need to change the color of the text, so footer P, color, and the color code is 404348. And that is it for the desktop version. So here's what we have so far. We've got our navigation looking good, our header, everything is centered. Here's all of our images. Then we have what we do, some larger images, and then our footer. If you guys make this your personal website, you can add in some GIF images here on the larger sections and even on the smaller ones. You can also use something like Lightbox on these and set that up so when you click on this, it'll go full screen. I might do a tutorial on that in the future. It's very easy to implement. And so yeah, that's what we have so far. Let's make this responsive. So I'm gonna go ahead and scale this down and we'll see what we have so far. The navigation looks like it can stay the same. All this text needs to be pushed over in line to the left. The images need to be fixed. Uh, we're gonna hide this I am and push this to the left. This is good. And this is gonna be pushed over to the left, I believe as well. So to make this responsive, the first thing I'm gonna do is add a breakpoint at 991 pixels. So I'm gonna say at media, only screen, and, and then in parentheses, I'm gonna say max dash width, and then 991 pixels, and then we can open that. So everything we put in here is gonna overwrite the above styling after this is met. So when this is smaller than 991 pixels, everything in here will be applied. So first, let's target the header. So header P, and I'll set that to a width of 100%. Next thing we need in here is the dot work A image, and we need to set these to a margin of 2%, and then a width of 96%. Then we can do the same thing to the dot work to section, a image, and we're gonna set the margin to 2% and then the width to 96%. So 
So, so far, things are looking pretty good. We could leave it, I think, right here. We just need to hide that I am. But we're going to go a little bit farther and align things to the left just to make it a little bit nicer on mobile and tablets. So we're going to add one more breakpoint. So outside of this one, I'm going to say at media again, and then only screen and then parentheses max dash width. And we're going to set this one to 768 pixels. And then we'll open that. So inside of here, we're going to target the header first. And we'll set the width on this to 96% to match our image width. And then we'll need to realign this and adjust some spacing because the margin's a bit too big. So we'll say margin 30 pixels on the top, auto on the right, 100 pixels on the bottom, and then auto on the left. Then we can text align this to the left and that's all lined up correctly. The next thing I need to target is the dot what I do section. Here we're going to line this to the left as well. And we're going to fix that spacing. So width is 96%. And then we need to center it up and adjust the height. So we'll say margin. And this one's going to have 70 pixels on the top. Auto on the right. 100 pixels on the bottom. And auto on the left. Now we have that I am just weirdly kind of hanging out here. So let's hide that. So we gave that a class of dot I am. And we'll say visibility of hidden. So now that's gone. And then the last thing we're going to do is push this over to the left. So I'm going to say footer text align left. And that's a little too far over. So we'll adjust the width of this to 90%. And then the margin, it needs to be 60 pixels on the top and bottom, and then auto on the left and right. And I think that lines it up very nice. Let's see. Yeah. So that should be everything we need to make this completely responsive and look good on desktop, tablet, and mobile. So let's go back to our desktop view and check everything out. This looks good. And then we'll start to drag until we get our first breakpoint, which should be around here. So this would be kind of our tablet breakpoint. Everything's full size. We still have the I am. Footer's still centered. Everything's still centered. And then when we get to the breakpoint here, you'll see everything slides over to the left. And then that stays the same all the way to the full mobile. So that is it for our website. It's now completely responsive across desktop, tablet, and mobile. Uh, if you'll notice, it's not very difficult. I think a lot of times people get overwhelmed with it. And I hope with this video, I've showed you how simple it really can be sometimes. Obviously, you can get into more complicated CSS, and then it gets a little bit trickier. But you still follow the fundamentals of creating a breakpoint and replacing code that you've already written with minor changes. Also, before I go, for those of you who've been wanting a responsive tutorial in this series for a while, I'm going to try my best to add more responsive designs into this series in the future. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more UI-related content, and as always, have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.